Great. Thanks for that. Back to Perth. OK, a couple of questions here. The first one was that Martin uh, mentioned a number of key event showcases that uh, for bands wanting to break in the UK that they shouldn't really miss to develop some, improve their uh, or increase their publicity in the market, but uh, as a, and, and really to start to to work there and get some hype in that particular market before they went on to look for agents or promoters. Can you just um, mention a couple of those events that you went through quite rapidly? Would it be easier if I did that so you, so you did it on your website? Sure. Yep. Um, Martin, yeah, I'll, make, exactly. I'll make that link available. I'll make a list yeah, of these yeah. um, festivals available on our blog. Yeah, and that would be that useful information to have. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Um, if you check out the blog, probably <coughs> Friday morning, I'll have um, a list of the events that Martin's talked about available there. So make sure you check that out. In fact, you can get an RSS feed out of it if you're really, really, really keen. Now, um, any more questions another, from you, another question. Eric? Yeah, another question here. Um, yeah, just a quick question. There's an Australian music directory uh, which lists, you know, promoters and radio pluggers and all the people in the industry. I'm wondering if there's an equivalent one in the UK that you can there buy and have website. access to all the names and it's, emails and all that kind of thing. Yeah, there, it's still there is, is, is a, a book called The Unsigned Guide, and there's also a Music Week directory, but then there's also information in the handout you're going to get on those as well. There's well. a white book as well, and yeah. the, the trouble with a lot of the ones, there's almost too much information in them. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's yeah. like the thing, the last question about the events, you know, that's, you know, I mean, if you look on virtual festivals, there were 460 festivals in the UK last year. Yeah. But actually, there's only about 40 real ones. Well, there's a couple yeah, of ones. Yeah, yeah whatever. It's, it's slightly more complicated than that. And that's, so in terms of really narrowing it and I think the industry is changing so much. And so quickly. And so yeah, quickly. Kind of like it's that, kind of like, yeah, so you kind of, yeah. You ring up for Dave and Dave's gone. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so is the venue. Yeah. <laughs> On the Great Escape site, there's a... We develop. That's what yeah. we're. It's a, a work in progress, but that we are intending for the, on the Great Escape website to have a, that sort of very basic information for international acts because we get asked these questions all the time. Yeah. So, in other words, the main festival. Well, there will be that yeah. festival list on there. You know, promoters. the main all club promoters exactly, and the main obvious media things. Yeah. Sure. What about useyourears.co.uk? Don't know that one. You don't know that. Yeah. Okay. I use it sometimes. So. Right. That has quite a lot of reference on it, but but it's all in the guide that you're going to get at the end. Okay, so now was... here in Sydney, um, Raj, you had a question. Um, yeah, I just a couple of questions actually. I mean, we're in the position um, of being very fortunate and having every member of the band having a UK passport. So um, we, we've got an album that we've recorded and we've got some good, good, uh, I guess, things happening here and we're planning on heading over there for an extended period of time. Um, from what I'm understanding, I mean, your suggestion wouldn't be to actually hit up um, labels or distribution, and it would be more focusing on um, establishing a, a live grassroots level, and I guess keeping the the physical sales um, online through Amazon um, via our website and that kind of thing. Um, is that is that have I got that right? Is that the way that you well, are suggesting we we pursue? Or well, yeah, if you've got a hit single or a hit album, a, a best-selling single and album in Australia, then. Naturally enough, the probably the physical uh, guys here will should be aware of it or could be made aware of it quite easily, and they'll look at how many units you've sold and go, oh yeah, we're interested here or not. Um, but as the market is diminishing here, um, just because you've released an album and got something out there, it would be much harder because you're on the back of all the English people trying to get deals as well, which is why we're saying, you know, therefore the live side is the way to build up from that grassroots level and sell on download. You know, you can make more money than putting but it up. But in terms of company. how you spend your energies, if you're yeah. like a relatively new act, then you say you're in the fortune position yeah. having British passports and you yeah, can afford to go over to them, then, yeah, absolutely don't bother, yeah, ringing up independent labels. You want to spend your time emailing yeah. These these younger club bookers around the country. Yes. Same we're thinking of coming over next year. That's right. Here's our stuff, you know. Yeah. And you have that advantage of getting here and camping here. And if you're yeah. here for a year or two years, so be it. Yeah. Get out and get on the road. But I mean, you could definitely get. You could. I mean, if if you haven't got the visa problem, if you can, as long as you can afford to be here, you will definitely get some gigs because yeah. as long as you're not 
completely hopeless because <laughs> you know it's like in these small towns it's, it's you can actually sell you know yeah. thing from Australia so, well actually yeah, that's, that's I mean my local that's town which does about one gig every six months it, it's as local bands it's the next one's been headlined by supposedly the best rock band from Gibraltar <laughs> <laughs> so I might even go to that one <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that what Gibraltar is <laughs> it's just the rock. only rock band in Gibraltar <laughs> Okay, so, uh, I think there was a question at the back here. Francis, you had a question. Yeah, hi guys. Um, I spoke to a, uh, a certain member of In Excess about two weeks ago and he said that he faced a level of cynicism in the, new, in the UK for years uh, at being an Australian and being an Australian act. And it took them obviously right. a long time. For being in Excess. <laughs> <laughs> but do, do you think that, and I'd like you know to go to the core of the truth of the answer, is there a level of cynicism, do you think, towards the expat or the community that is Australia from UK yes. and UK media. I've seen reviews when I was in the UK about two, oh. well, two months ago. I don't think it's bad as it was. Uh, you know, it's gotten uh, better the, since the, the Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just interested to know because our biggest bands which have gone over there and which, is, which have been perceived to have broken through like Jet, Jet and Wolfmother and Silverjet have been pretty heavily criticised and I'm just, just interested to know your, your thoughts on that. Uh, oh, I, I, I still think there is. You know, I, I've always believed that um, uh, if you're, you know, whenever you're not in town, you know, like any, any sort of blurb just goes straight in the bin if, if you're with a, a label or something. Um, I, know, I, know it, I know that it happened with Tim Friedman and the Whitlams at Warner Brothers, and I know they were, they were crucified and buried by Warner Brothers over here. Um, and yes, although it, it is getting better, but there is that old traditional rivalry uh, between the Poms and the Aussies, and that ain't going to change. Now, now we're better at sports, though. So I'm, like, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> you see, it starts already. You know. They're um, even yeah. better in the Paralympics as well. You know, yeah. if, if you're not in town to keep your profile up, it's, 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 it can be hard. You know, it's, mm. it's, it's not an easy thing. You suddenly drop behind yeah. all the other bands. But I think generally think it isn't as bad as it. No, I no it's not as bad as it was. I mean, was. for starters, but they used to just generally speaking, I mean, like 10 years ago, just being, apart from possibly in America, it was just like, I mean, it was incredibly hard for European bands to get any traction in the UK at all. They're just like, what do you mean? You're a French rock band, whatever. And that's become way better in the last 10 yeah. years. And a lot of that's got to do with, with the internet, but also just, you know, well, it's kind of opened up. up yeah. So I do, do think it's um, changing that score. But also, you've got to realise within excess, they were actually an incredibly unfashionable band in the U. But they, were, they did have hits, but they were never cool. Yeah. No. Just, if, yeah. if you bypass the tastemakers at the grassroots level, they'll never engage with you. And, so, and they're the guys that are cool. So unless they're saying you're cool, if you, so if you come into this market and you go into a, a level higher, than those cool guys, they're nev you're never going to get them back and them to say, oh, yeah, it's really cool anymore. They'll just go, no, nah, it's not cool. <laughs> they'll, they'll blank you. And so... but, but Canada had a much worse image than Australia. Oh, yeah. Now it's like, you know, you used to hide the fact you're Canadian. Now it's like the yeah. first but, thing you put yeah, on your CV. It's not the Americans yeah. speak Canadian. Well, it used to be Brian Adams and Celine yeah, yeah, Dion. Yeah, 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 now yeah. it's Arcade Fire. Okay, <laughs> yeah, <it's> cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's pick up one more question in the room here. Yeah. Um, Guy, just as far as the, uh, that Barfly network goes, are there any other um, good hints you can sort of give us regarding contacting agents um, or any websites you can suggest or just that grassroots level of gigging? Uh, yeah, well, we, we can. Well, the, 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 the sort of standard agents, if you like, that the, the main agencies here... Um, they don't generally deal with the grassroots level. I, no. The, they would... There's, a lot, there's actually a lot of new young agents that have only literally started the last two yeah. years. I mean, a lot of the guys I deal with are, you know, are, like, are actually probably similar age to me, and they just don't take on new bands anymore. But there is, I've noticed in the last two years, there's a lot more new younger agents. Um, in terms of the company, I mean, I think if you get... Um, uh, what's that? I mean, audience, audience Magazine. Um, is it Audience Magazine? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's not bad. Get that. It's quite cheap. Uh, that always gives you know lists all the tours coming up. You've got all the eight, and you can yeah. work, you can work out from that which agents are more likely to be interested I mean, this in it. Yeah, these two. Yeah, the, I think it's about fifty pounds a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and on the back, it's got. Um, and also, that's actually quite good because that's something that has news on like small. If it comes actually because half the UK will get it. Has news on smaller venues as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I would suggest if you're asking that question. But there's about ten agencies. 
kind yeah. of re relevance. If you look in like the white book, you'll see about 300 agencies mentioned. Yeah. Ninety percent of those are just like people you don't want to speak yeah. to. They're like they're booking camp race shows and whatever. Yeah. It's not. It's better not real to go into the back of all. Exactly. It's much better back of that. Yeah. Look at the helter skelters. Yeah. X-ray touring. And, yeah. It will become very obvious uh, which are the main yeah. which are the main agencies, yeah, and and which are the younger agents are the ones you want to target. Yeah, but if you, if you're asking if you're asking that question, potentially you need to send someone over to do a reconnaissance, and go out and see the venues and meet some of these promoters mm -hmm. because it's going to be regardless if you're if you're cold calling <coughs> Australia, it is it's going to be tough. Yeah. Whereas if you've come over and actually press flesh with some people, then. And you know, then when you actually do contact them and say, "Hey, the band's okay. coming," it's it's going to be a lot. Oh, that's good if you if you if you know you've got enough interest from your, your you know web yeah. traffic. Yeah. Then absolutely, it's definitely worthwhile. Yeah. Then I mean, thinking of coming over to one of the conventions. Like I, I, ILMC in March is possibly the the one where because it's based in London. Yeah, it's all the money's in London. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's expensive, but if you're a manager of a band or you've got several it's probably bands worth, on it's your roster, it's worth as well. Yeah. You, uh, the guy, everyone's accessible at yeah, ILMC. Yeah. Everyone is fair game you can go yeah. go higher I money so and so here's my stuff we'd love to you know we'd love to do stuff over here so is everyone else doing that so yeah. you're still yeah, yeah, yeah. behind the eight ball but at least you're there as Mark says pressing flesh and they they've got your face clocked and you've got their face clocked and yeah. it shows them that you're actually making the effort and investing money in your band's future you're not just on the phone from Australia going Hi, we're doing this, or here's an email. Yeah, you know, it, and, and it, generally speaking, it's the older guys there. So it's, again, you, you'd combine that with going to see, trying to see the book, yeah, yeah. booker at the bar floor. But the bar floor, you can turn up to that club, just like yeah. literally ask to, find, to meet the booker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now, if you're from Australia, they will come and meet you. Yeah, you know, and the academy groups, the other group that's got about. 20 venues around the country. That's right, which is what yeah. Mark said. You come over here, do a reconnaissance. Yeah, Don't yeah. bring the whole band over. Come over, yeah. say in a couple of months' time, and then say we're going to be coming in May, June, July, or whatever of next year. Put your plans in order. Yeah, and, and try and uh, try and get yeah. a bit of Europe as well. You know, go and see, go and see like the companies like the Alternative in Holland. Yeah. Because again, they'll you know they they specialise. You know, they love putting on new bands. Yeah. Um, yeah, and try and meet as many agents as possible, particularly younger ones. <laughs> Okay, I think we've run up to ten past seven here in in Australia. So I think Matthew, hang on. Oh, we Bernie. do have a question from Darwin. Oh. Thank you. You, there was something I'd forgotten. <laughs> but we have one more. Oh, Darwin. Darwin. How can we forget Darwin? Um, so just a quick one for you. Um, just wanted to ask about uh, like the hard rock sort of scene over there. I'm just wondering if if the scene in the UK. Is, is strong in that hard rock sector, or do you think that Europe is, like places like Germany, for instance, are possibly better for that? I'm thinking along the lines yeah, of, yeah. I mean, like a UK band that comes to mind, maybe like Skunk and Nancy type vibe, but there's a new band out of Ireland called um, uh, In Case of Fire, sort of in between that, those two sort of spectrums. Um, I'd say the metal, the metal scene's pretty strong in this country. I mean, it's, it's strong. It's a, it's another niche market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you're, you're I mean Kerrang and Wellington, Metal Hammer, the, the, the those, those look very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and Kerrang Radio and Kerrang TV now. Isn't I think they've got TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah got if you've got a clip, send it to Kerrang. I'm sure they'd be. And, and they're, they're much less focused on which country a band comes from. Yeah. And, and but you're also right about Germany. I mean, it's very big in Germany. I mean, you know, Finland. most of Finland specialises yeah. in you know, yeah. metal. <laughs> um, so I mean, their bands basically all sell loads in, in Germany. So yeah. yeah, the online community with that uh, genre is like actually, a, this is classic case of a large influential tribe. It, like, is, yeah. it is very active, and we we work with a band called Enter Shikari, which um, potentially no one's heard of in in Australia. You walk up to any 17 year old kid. Anywhere in the UK, they love the band. They're absolutely bonkers about it. Um, unsigned, oh, they're on Interscope in the US, but in the UK they're still doing all their own thing. And I mean, these guys will sell out. They'll sell out five shows at the Astoria, no problem, struck off the back of a single press release, which goes online, and that's the only place it goes to. Um, so there is a big market for it, um, and they are much more savvy in terms of, I think, the internet than probably the indie market or the pop industry. So. Yeah, develop your online presence. The promoters are very welcome to get more more bands in, and um, yeah, it's very active. Magic. Well, at this point, I'd just like to thank Michael, Rusty, 
Mark, you. Martin, for giving up your time to share quite so much with us. Can I ask all of you in the rooms to give these people a round of applause?